Let's learn Bower today. A lot of you guys have heard about Bower. It is a package manager for the web. If you know what package managers are, you're like, yes, this is great that it's here. Uh, if you don't know what package managers are, uh, you're going to learn what that is and what the value of that is and why everybody's buzzing about it. So let's do pow let's uh, just get into it. I'll show you what this is about. First off, you'll need Node.js installed on your machine. If that's not installed, uh, here's how you know is you type Node-V. I have version 0.10.22. If that's if you don't see that, then go ahead to Node.js.org, get it installed. Once that's there, then you can go npm install dash g bower so that is going to globally install bower for me so now it is an executable anywhere on my system um, there you go bower is now installed and ready to be used so go to the folder where your project is which is in sandbox test for me and let's just go ahead and say we want to add jquery to our page we go bower install jquery and that's going to go grab the latest greatest version of jquery and you can see I got it in Finder here. You can see it added a Bower Components folder, added jQuery, and added a uh, distribution version for that right there, as well as the full source. Um, and this is Sublime, same package up here. So now, if I go Bower List, it says that it jQuery is installed in the Bower Components folder. If I go Bower List Paths with double dashes, then it will show me the path to the one I'm going to want to use by default. So now I can just go here. There you go. jQuery is on my page. Bower is super great for that. Let's say I also want to add Backbone. Bower install Backbone. It's going to automatically grab Backbone. Backbone has a dependency of underscore, so it's also going to grab underscore JS for me. And now if I do Bower list paths, I've got my one for underscore, got my one for Backbone, and I could just add those all here so that's the first awesome thing about bower is it just gives you a really easy way to install dependencies um, this wouldn't have been a complete pain in the rear but i've had to download the zip file unzip the zip file put it where i want it to go and this is just way better um and so that's step one is using it just to install stuff just using it to download stuff on your page if you want to get by the way a let me uninstall jquery um, if you want to install a specific version, you know, lots of people don't want to use jQuery 2.0 if you're supporting legacy browsers. jQuery just did pound. What is that? 1.9.2. I could probably grab that. There you go. jQuery 1.9.2. Grab that specific version. Let's make sure that's what's in there. And oh, we got an error there. Available versions. 1.9.1. Okay. There we go. And see, it was even nice enough to know, dummy, there is no 1.9.2 out there right now. And so, same thing. Let's go list paths. And sometimes it doesn't have the path in there. Bower component slash jQuery. Got to pick your own yourself here. So, there you go. jQuery slash jQuery. And there's just no dist path. So sometimes it doesn't have the path in there for you, depending on how they added Bower. So that's step one of Bower. Use it to download and install JavaScript files. Let's go to step two. This is honestly where I think Bower becomes even more useful is, let's say we're working on this project and we're not the only ones working on this project. It's kind of a bad idea, a bad pattern to check in this code into your Git repository. Um, as the web keeps growing and growing and everything becomes interdependent on, its on each other, uh, a good pattern is to only check in code that has to do with your project specifically. So we don't want this to be in the repo. We just want a package file that says, hey, install these things for us. So we're going to go Bower init and start making that package file. By default, it's going to start throwing in these things. I'm just going to say yes to everything. There we go. Just keep saying yes, yes, yes. I'm just going to I'm just going to do all the defaults and say yes. And it's going to make a bower.json file for me. Here's all the values I put in. I can change them now if I want. Um, and here's the dependencies that were currently installed at the point of me creating this init file. 
And so now what I can do is I can actually, I'll have a git ignore line for the Bower Components folder. So Bower Components will not be included in my git repository, just these two files. And so now whenever anybody else pulls the repo down, they just go Bower install. And that's going to grab all their dependencies. So it's kind of like a common thing. You download the folder, you run Bower install, and now your folders, your project is good to be used. And so we've, we've cleaned it out. We've kept all these dependencies out. We know it's going to automatically load the specific version that our, uh, our product is built for. As the versions keep incrementing, we're only going to get a new version if we intentionally choose to go 2.0. 2.0 um, and so that's kind of where the package management concept comes in for Bower another thing you can do is you can install say you have a large network and you have internal company repos of projects and pieces of code you can install those using Bower you can go Bower install um, and then a github repo URL say if you have a local installation of github enterprise uh, or if you just have private GitHub repos, as long as you have access, it'll use your GitHub SSH keys, and you can install any GitHub URL as long as everyone else on your project will have access to that repo added in here as well. So it gives you a way to break up your project into meaningful chunks and components, uh, and each one just can use a Bower package to do it all. And this doesn't just go for JavaScript. I can go Bower install Bootstrap. And this will give me all the CSS files. Um, and actually, now that we have a Bower JSON file, you notice I added Bootstrap, but it didn't get added to the Bower.json. That's a mistake that people commonly make a lot is you have to hit flag capital S if you want it to save to your actual Bower JSON file. And see, now you'll notice that it reloaded. Bootstrap is saved. If I go Bower list paths it gives me multiple paths for bootstrap because bootstrap has the javascript file it's got the css file and it's also got all the glyph icon fonts so yay there we are that's bauer hope you enjoyed learning about it have a great day